Now, a few months back, I unboxed and got my first look at the HP NB17 for 2021, an all metal 17 inch laptop that had premium build quality, a beautiful 4K UHD display, 11th gen Tiger Lake processor, and the MX450 discrete GPU. Yeah, on paper it sounds pretty good, but in real world usage, long term, is it a good buy? Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP 17 here for 2021. Coming up. Now, before we begin, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Right now, you can pick up the NV17 on sale for $839.99. So that's a really good price for a great general purpose all around laptop. Now, my unit priced as configured comes in at $1,389.99. For those interested, check out that link below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, I already did my unboxing and first look review of this product. For those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. I highly encourage you to check it out. And right off the bat, you're going to notice the design is all metal. That means it's going to be rock solid in terms of the build construction, very little flex or give on the chassis, and it really has maintained over the last few months. Really good in that regard. And you're looking at 5.6 pounds or 2.54 kilograms. Definitely not the lightest 17-inch laptop out there, but definitely portable enough to take with you on the go. And when it comes to the ports on the left side, you're looking at a USB-A port. You're also looking at an HDMI 2.0B port, a Thunderbolt 4 port that does data charge and display out, and a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And moving over to the right side, a full-size SD card reader, which is certainly welcome on this laptop, two USB-A ports, and finally your power port where you can charge this laptop. Remember, you could also charge via that USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port as well. Now, for those of you that already saw my unboxing video, in that video, I opened up this laptop to see what is user upgradable. It's pretty easy. Check out that video if you haven't. I'll leave a link in the description below. But once inside, you'll notice that there are a few things as the user you can upgrade yourself, which is always good. But before we get to that, you'll notice the dual fans for cooling. We'll talk about the thermals and the temperatures on this laptop in just a little bit. And you'll also notice that 55.6 watt hour battery. We'll get to the battery life and charging times later on in this video. Now, the good news is as the user, you can upgrade the RAM. There are two SODOM slots and my unit has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM running in dual channel mode. And as far as the SSD is concerned, you as the user, once again, can upgrade that as well. So that's good if you need more storage down the road. Now, the one included with my unit is 512 gigabytes of NVMe PCIe Gen 3. As you can see from these speeds, it definitely is Gen 3, that's for sure. And not the faster Gen 4 we've been seeing as of late. Now, this also has a Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 card combo, and it worked well in terms of the speeds and the connections. I've had no issues with it over the last few months. Now, the good news is it's slotted in. That means as the user, you can swap it out down the road. That's always a good option to have. All right, let's talk about the display, but let's talk about the options. As far as the display is concerned, there are three of them. These are 17.3 inch displays, two full HD options, one of which is a multi-touch option. And then of course you have a 4K option, which is the one I have here. That is a 3840 by 2160, a non-touch option. There is no touch 4K option available for the NV17. And as I mentioned, this is a 17.3 inch IPS display. It's a glossy display. That means you'll notice some glaring reflections in certain lighting conditions. That's something to be aware of. It's also a 16 to nine aspect ratio, which is optimized for viewing movies, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. And it's all worked very well on this 4K UHD display. You're looking at some really deep blacks, good white points, good contrast, and it also has a good Delta E score of 0.74. In fact, that's excellent. Anything below two is considered good. 
And it also has good coverage of the color gamut, as you see here. You're looking at 98% sRGB, 93% Adobe RGB, 83% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 88% NTSC. This is a really good choice if you are a content creator that does color grading, Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. It works well. And it's a pretty bright display coming in at 400 nits. I had no issues indoor or even outdoor unless you're in direct sunlight, of course. That's due to the nature of the display, which is glossy. And it has a pretty decent look with some pretty thin side bezels, a really thin top bezel, and a bit of a chin, not too bad, on the bottom we've seen worse, giving off a sleek and modern look. I like the way this laptop looks in terms of the aesthetics. And on that top bezel is the front-facing webcam. Let's give it a look. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP NV17, all new here for 2021. We're looking at a 720p webcam that, quite frankly, is not very good. It's very grainy, a lot of noise. Uh, but the internal mics aren't too bad as far as that is concerned. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the audio quality as well as the video quality for doing Zoom and all your work from home needs with such a webcam. I'm curious to know. But to me, not very good. Now, there is no Windows Hello camera on this. That means you cannot log in with face recognition, but there is a fingerprint scanner located within the keyboard itself and setup was easy, worked well, registering my finger each and every time I used it. Good job in that regard. Now, as you see here, I have a pretty slippery surface here, so it wasn't easy to open it with one finger. I needed two hands to open it. But once you do lift the lid, you'll notice the keyboard itself, and I really do like this layout. I'm a big fan of these HP keyboards in terms of the key travel, in terms of the tactile feedback. Really worked well and very comfortable for typing in extended periods of time. It never felt like my fingers would bottom out. Now, there is an inclusion of a numpad. For those that do crunch numbers, you're going to love that. For those that don't like it, well... Sorry to say, it's here, it's not going anywhere. And it has a multi-stage backlit keyboard, lights up white against the gray key, sometimes hard to differentiate or see the difference between the two. But the overall typing experience has been good on this. I have no complaints whatsoever, worked well in that regard. Now, as far as the touchpad is concerned, it's a precision touchpad that I thought had pretty good size in terms of the spaciousness. It was pretty comfortable to use, and I thought it was super responsive when it comes to scrolling, doing all the gestures with it. It all worked well. No complaints in that regard. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this has a four cell 55 watt hour battery, and I got about seven hours and 30 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So real world mixed usage, you're looking at anywhere from five to seven hours, depending on what you're doing. Not too bad considering the size of this battery, not the biggest battery in terms of a 17 inch laptop, that's for sure. Now, they do include a 90 watt power adapter that takes about 90 minutes to give you a full charge, and that's not too bad as well. And you could also charge 50% in 30 minutes. So, fast charge is supported here as well. All right, let's talk performance. And what we're looking at here is the Core i7 1165G7, 11th gen Tiger Lake processor from Intel. You could also get it with the Core i5. And it also has a discrete GPU. It's the MX450 with two gigabytes of video RAM. That's from NVIDIA, of course. And that'll give you a little bit more horsepower than the integrated solution with the Iris XE graphics. But you're not going to get a huge bump in terms of the processing power in terms of the graphics, but it definitely helps. And as you can see here, you can definitely game on this laptop if you lower the settings to the certain settings that might give you some more playable frame rates, as you see here. Now, of course, you do have the option of adding an external GPU. That's thanks to the Thunderbolt 4 port that this has. But definitely the occasional game here and there is possible on the NV17. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, the CPU would turbo boost to 4.1 gigahertz for about three seconds or so and reach a core temperature of 98 degrees Celsius. Then it would drop down to 1.4 to 3.3 gigahertz to maintain a cooler 74 degrees Celsius. And the takeaway is from this, you will see thermal throttling under heavy load, but maintain good clock speeds during normal everyday tasks. That's been pretty good. And as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, I never noticed it getting overly hot there were a few hot spots on the top of the keyboard as you see here and on the underside but nothing to the point where you can't touch it nothing to the point where it's unreasonable now this does have the dual fans as i mentioned and they will kick in under heavy load and they get pretty loud under that heavy load scenario but for normal everyday tasks they actually remain pretty quiet so depending on what you're doing with this laptop will dictate how the fan noise will go something to be aware of 
And the other thing I noticed is the downward facing speakers are actually pretty good. They got pretty loud. I was a little bit surprised on that. And it also had a hint of bass, decent mids, and overall filled up a room rather nicely with some decent volume. I would say they did a decent job when it comes to the speakers. Not too bad. Now, of course, you could always connect Bluetooth or wired headphones for more enhanced audio experience. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the NV17 here for 2021 as we close out 2021? Is this still a great choice? And I think it is, especially for a general purpose laptop that's great for everyday tasks. I like its bright, beautiful 4K display. I like the fact that it's great for everyday tasks, as I mentioned. Loud and clear speakers, which are really good. A robust, solid metal case. Excellent keyboard. Of course, that's going to be great for typing on. Great port selection on this. I thought it was a really well-rounded and that regard upgradable ram ssd and wi-fi which i'm absolutely loving good battery life so far on this not too bad considering the size of the battery which is not the biggest for a 17 inch laptop so that's good now as far as what's not good about this laptop obviously that 720p webcam here as we close out 2021 is not acceptable it was grainy it was noisy it didn't like it although the internal mics actually did a decent job now, I noticed that it will thermal throttle under heavy load. Not too unexpected here, but that's something to be aware of. Again, only under heavy load for normal tasks. Didn't see much throttling, if any. No 4K touch option either, but that's not a huge deal. And of course, it is a reflective display, but a really nice overall general purpose laptop that won't break the bank. I'm going to give the HP NV17 a score of 87%, making it worth your money. So what do you think about the HP Envy 17? My time with it was very good, and especially because I like the price. Right now, you can get it with a starting price of 839. That gets you the Core i5. But of course, you're going to deck it out. You're going to be over $1,000. But considering the performance you get for everyday tasks, which was really good, considering the fact that you do get that discrete uh, MX450 GPU, that's going to be helpful in terms of a graphics boost. Not the greatest out there, but definitely something to give you a little bit more more oomph, as they say. But of course, you can game on this if you lower the settings. It does, does have the Thunderbolt 4 port, so if you want to add an external GPU, multiple 4K monitors, you have that option on this laptop. There's an HDMI port. A uh, lot to like about this laptop, again, especially that price-to-performance ratio. Battery life was pretty decent, be, considering the fact that it doesn't have the biggest battery out there, especially for a 17-inch laptop. I got seven and a half hours, or a little bit more than that, on my continuous web surfing test. So if you want to look at it real world mixed usage expect anywhere from five to seven hours depending on what you're doing with the laptop so please keep that in mind now it does have its own charger it has a 90 watt power adapter that you can use with that barrel pin connector you could also charge via that usb-c thunderbolt 4 port uh, no problems in that regard uh, it does have the ability for you to go inside the laptop to upgrade the ram the ssd and of course the wi-fi card which i'm a big proponent of i love upgradability as far as the user is concerned i think more manufacturers should do the same in their laptops i would expect nothing less especially at a 17 inch laptop that we have here. Uh, check the Black Friday for this. Uh, make sure you're gonna get the cheapest price on that. Again, I'll, I'll have the link in the description below. Again, right now it's $839 to a start at a Core i5 and goes up from there. Uh, doesn't break the bank, gives you a lot of bang for the buck. Again, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.